All right, good afternoon. I'm Sheriff Mike Williams with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, and I'm joined here today by Special Agent in Charge of the Jacksonville Field Office, uh, Rachel Rojas from the FBI. Um, our agencies have been working together on this investigation into missing five-year-old Taylor Williams. Uh, also working on this effort, I want to mention uh, Jacksonville Fire and Rescue, uh, the De Florida, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, FDLE, uh, NCIS, the Naval Criminal Investigative Service, um, all of those agencies working together here locally. And then as we'll get into here in just a minute, uh, the Alabama State Bureau of Investigation, uh, the Marengo County Sheriff's Office, and the Demopolis Police Department all in Alabama have been very supportive. We want to thank them for their help. Uh, so at this time, we have deployed assets to Alabama to participate in search efforts. Uh, primarily, we have our investigative teams from the Homicide Unit on the ground in Alabama uh, and Missing Persons Unit. Uh, and additionally, uh, we have deployed our incident management team on site in a support function to oversee the planning, operations, logistics, and safety and security of the entire search operations. Uh, last night, I spoke to Mayor Curry and requested the use of JFRD's Urban Search and Rescue Team. And later today, 38 JFRD personnel will deploy to Alabama uh, to assist us in that search. So again, here's what we know. Uh, as we have previously stated in the morning hours of Wednesday, November the 6th, a young Taylor was reported missing from her family home on Ivy Street, located on the north side of Jacksonville. Uh, as of today, uh, Taylor's mother, Brianna Williams, remains uncooperative with this investigation. She has not spoken to us since Wednesday, and she was the last person to see Taylor. She is a person of interest in this case, and we still need her cooperation in our efforts. Uh, we're still also asking for the public's help with providing us any details related to Taylor's whereabouts. So a little different than last time, specifically, again, um, we're asking anyone who has seen Taylor and Brianna together, uh, but this time between Jacksonville and Alabama in the last two weeks. So if you've seen Taylor and Brianna Williams, the mother and child together, between Jacksonville and Alabama in the last two weeks, we would ask that you reach out to us. We believe the mother was traveling in her black uh, 2017 Honda Accord, tinted windows, black rims. There's a picture here. We're going to provide that picture to everyone so you can uh, share that information. And again, anybody who has information on that or anything related to this case, please reach out to the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office at 904-630-0500. You can email us at jsocrimetips at jacksheriff.org. And obviously, you can remain anonymous and work through our partners at First Coast Crime Stoppers at one eight six six eight four five tips So with that, I want to turn it over to Sack Rojas for a couple comments. Thank you, Sheriff Williams. Very soon after little Taylor Williams was reported missing, we at the FBI Jacksonville Field Office offered assistance and any available resources to JSO to help in their search. Since that time, dozens of FBI special agents and intel analysts and technical experts have committed hundreds of hours to this investigation. We've called upon several of our skilled teams, including the FBI Child Abduction Response Team, the Cellular Analysis Survey Team, the Evidence Response Team, and many others with legal and technical expertise. Much of their work continues as we speak, both here in Jacksonville and in Alabama through our counterparts at FBI Mobile and FBI Birmingham. Right now, FBI Mobile is assisting their state and local partners, as well as JSO in Alabama, and we are all coordinating closely. Sheriff Williams, you have my commitment that the FBI will support JSO as this investigation continues to unfold in the days and weeks to come. As our community has shown over the past few days, there's a lot of love for Taylor here, even those who have never even met her. And we want you to know that we will do anything we can to bring her home. Thank you for the opportunity to speak, and thank you for the partnership, Sheriff Williams. Yes, thank you. So again, just briefly, as she mentioned, we have a lot of work to do, but we do want to thank our state, local, and federal partners, not only here, but in Alabama as well. Uh, they've been a huge help, and again, we've got a, a lot of work to do. So with that, we can take a few questions. Sheriff, this is a considerable amount of resources being pulled out of the Jacksonville area. How good is the intelligence that you're going to get some sort of resolution out there in Alabama? So obviously every tip, every lead, every bit of um, you know, witness testimony we get, we cooperate and vet. So uh, we feel pretty comfortable 
uh, that this is the right step to take uh, and to bring some closure to this case. Is Where there in Alabama specifically are you searching? Is it Mopolis or Linden? Or? In, in that area. So we have a, a, a pretty large area that we're going to focus on. Uh, that will get narrowed down uh, later today, potentially, but it's in it's in that general vicinity of Linden and Democracy. Any end that she's still alive. So here's, here's, here's what I want to make the point of. So this, there's a lot of different efforts going on right now in this investigation. Um, there are search efforts underway. We still have other leads that we're focusing on as well. Uh, the information that drove us to Alabama, Alabama demanded this kind of response, and we absolutely hope to find her alive. And um, what if you believe that she had traveled to the Alabama area? Um, do you believe that this happened earlier this month, like around November 1st? So she traveled there. We won't get into the details of when. Why the change in time frame from six weeks to two months? That doesn't make any sense of time change. Well, the, remember the last one was anybody had seen them in Jacksonville. Um, and so now we're talking about a different kind of lead, and, and we need a different piece of information to cooperate with some other information that we have. So it's, a, it's while it sounds similar, it's a different request. If you've seen them together in the last two weeks between here and Alabama, please reach out and give us a call. Can you tell us where mom is right now? Can you tell us where mom is right now? Um, she is, uh, she's on the Navy base, but she's not in custody. Can you tell us about the evidence that's taking the search now to Alabama? Is there perhaps GPS tracking data? Yeah, we won't talk about anything that really led us to Alabama. Are you looking into any kind of partner that Brianna had or a boyfriend? Was she in a relationship at all? So we are looking at every option. Nothing is off the table. And uh, again, we would encourage people who have any information like that, uh, to please reach out and give us a call. Corey. Julie, locally, what now are the next steps in the investigation? So we have already given a lot of resources, of, you know, the case gets down. Correct. So we continue to take leads. We continue to take tips in from the community, and we will follow those leads up, whether they are local uh, or whether they are Georgia, Alabama. We'll continue to follow up those leads. So that that part of the investigation is, it hasn't stopped and won't stop. Sure. And so we'll continue well, on that on that track. Yes, sir. Sheriff, uh, how is the Navy involved with this? I mean, are they cooperating with JSO as well when it comes to Brianna staying on base? Uh, she is not under custody, you know, under any kind of uh, naval uh, confinement or anything like that. She's, you know, she just happens to she works on base. She has an op she can stay on base, so that's where she's at. At can she come so and go as she pleases? She absolutely can. Was there any evidence collected in the car? Or yeah, we won't talk about any evidence that was collected. Anyway, one more question. Right now. Um, Right now, as it stands, could mom be charged with some kind of crime or neglect, and do you know if she has an attorney? Uh, I do not know if she has an attorney, and we won't talk about any pending uh, charges. Last one. Did you, when you talked to her biological family, the dad, the grandparents, did, did they say at all that they were distant, that they had seen the little girl in the last, like, two years or so? We have heard that they were not really in contact that way. So without going into any detail about our conversations, I, I would say that the family and other people that we are uh, talking to are very cooperative. Thank you.